welcome back. This is the newspaper review segment. And this morning, um, two of uh, the dailies I have here have captured the story. And uh, the weekend finder says, June 3 disaster. Have we learned any lessons? It comes with a photograph of the uh, gold filling station structure. And uh, we'll talk deeply about that later on. But the question being asked is if we have learned any lessons from that. Now, the Daily Graphic has on the front page, never again, Zoom Lion Boss says, on first year of June 3 disaster. And also on the front page of the Daily Graphic, no new taxes. The story is on page 27. Preston assures nation pensions won't be taxed. Uh, that's from the Minister of Finance. Also, Dr. Edward Mahama on the front page there. And then I'll tell you that in the middle or on page um, three or four of the Ghanaian Times, minority questions survival of Commander Shika Factory. We'll take a look at that too when we come back. And then uh, we also have uh, the Bank of Ghana outlining new forex rules. These are the issues that will engage our attention this morning uh, on this segment. My guest in the studio to my right is the Director of Communications of the NPP, Nanakumia. Welcome. Thank you. And I hope you're doing great a year after June 3. Well, um, there's a kakamu to be economy, so <laughs> it's a bit difficult. Where were you last year exactly uh, a, year, a year ago? I was at home. Okay. Yes. So okay. I, I saw everything on television, mm. particularly uh, TV3. Mm. Yes. Welcome once again. And Thank then you. to my uh, left is the Director of Research of the NDC, Dr. William Hajidok. Grateful for your time this morning. Thank you. And uh, a year ago, you were out? or you No, were I was in. I was at home as well. Mm. And uh, how did it hit you? Oh, that's, that's a disaster that everybody felt um, uh, sympathetic about. And it was a great loss of lives. And we are we're, we're very sorry that it happened. Welcome once again. And Thank thanks you. so much for joining me right here. So let's start with uh, what happened a year ago and the commemorations have started. We're told that uh, a lot of activities this morning at the venue and uh, the weekend find out says, have we learned any lessons? Uh, on the daily graphic, uh, the front page story again says, Zoom Lion Boss says on first year of June 3 disaster, never again that it should happen. Dr. Haji, um, have we learned any lessons? We, we, we have to a large extent, um, to the extent that I think the first thing, the first, um, one of the first major responses that we had was the desilting of the drain, uh, the main drain. And, in, and indeed, around that area, the, the biggest problem has been the fact that water collects and doesn't flow out of, of that particular enclave. And, and therefore, it, it, it collects rather, rather um, um, you know, very dangerously in those areas. Now, the, the drains leading to that place uh, have been cleared somewhat, but there are lessons about the way we, we litter and the way we throw uh, bean into the, into the drains. That hasn't changed very much. People are still doing that, but also there are issues around um, uh, what Basically, the construction is going on there. It's not completed, and therefore, there's still an issue about when that will be completed and how that place will change um, um, drastically when, when that exercise is over. I see. So some engineers have argued that uh, there is this lack of political will to, to stop the flooding because uh, some uh, public officials tend to benefit when there, there, there is flooding and the wet property is destroyed. They said, the engineers are saying, look, we have, we have given them all that they need to get uh, Accra saved, and yet we, we don't if, see if it a, is a, a broadly, implementation. Okay, if it's broadly about Accra itself, generally, then there are issues that, that's, that go beyond just um, what you are saying. There are storm drains that have been constructed. Some have been con constructed. They carry the appropriate volumes of water, but there are still a couple more that have to be done mm. to, to, to change the situation. The condition is still one of the biggest problems. Right. Industrial area is one of the, still the biggest problem. People are building in waterways. And there, are, there are buildings in waterways. They are being that, given permits by authorities, those yes, in charge. Well, that, that's an issue that has to be dealt with mm. and dealt with properly. Um, and, and indeed, those who flout the building regulations ought to be punished. And that, I, I don't think uh, is anything that there will be some disagreement over. 
I'm grateful, Dr. Haji. Nana, so if one year on, can we say that we, we, we picked what happened a year ago, we learned our lessons, and that we can confidently say we might not go there again? Well, <clears throat> let me also wish your viewers a, a good morning and also your good self and um, my senior brother, Dr. Haji. Dr. Haji. <laughs> um, one year after the June 3rd flooding, but before the June 3rd flooding last year, there, were, there have been floodings right. in, in, some, in previous years. So it's not just about last year, June 3rd. Last year, June 3rd, the death toll was probably the highest but 200 people, because there was also some fire. Mm. But beyond June 3rd last year, uh, 2015, in 2014, 2013, 1996, it was flooding. Properties were destroyed. People lost their lives. People lost their businesses. So it is not just about last year. Mm. So what has changed? Nothing has changed. If something has changed, we would not be you will not be asking us this question. So obviously, nothing has changed. That's it. So it comes down to political will. Because the president, Muhammad, knows what he has to do. He tells us all the time, check the newspapers, what mm -hmm. he said last year. Check the newspapers, what was said in 1996. You think, he, you think he's not doing it? There's no. some dredging going no, on? I'm saying that Check what the president at that time said in 1996. Check what the president in um, any, any year that you can think of when there's flooding. They would sit on, on dingy boats and go and inspect. They would sit in helicopters. Don't you see them in the You saw the shots the last yes. time when it rained. Yes, and they make all the noises. So they know what they have to do. The political will is not there. That, that's the problem. That's the problem. In the first place, we've allowed planning laws to be violated. The law in this country says that you cannot construct a building within 100 feet of a storm drain. And yet it is there. <laughs> yes, it is there. In fact, some constructs on the drain. Hmm? You know it. You know it. So this is a system that we have that leadership has not lived up to expectation. Don't you politicians play on the psyche of uh, 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 those in office? When they go to, to drive them out, then you tell them, vote them out. Tell them that mm -hmm. if they drive you out, you, if they move you out, you vote them out. So they remain there. Politicians uh, can be blamed for it. No, all politicians are to blame, and mm -hmm. one of them. But then there are people who actually have the executive authority vested in them. You understand what I'm saying? So the buck stops on their table. If they function, the rest of the system will function. There's a, cl a clear law. Don't construct a building 100 feet within a storm drain. <laughs> That's a law. But go to the storm drains. People have actually constructed, not near the storm drain, but on it. You see? Now, when it comes to demolition, you know the problems. Mm. You see? You know the problems. So what has to be done? You have to look at the alternative engineering. You have to look at alternative engineering. If because of failure over the decades, you cannot break houses, because people have constructed expensive properties blocking the, 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 the flood water. So you can't break the properties. Then you have to look at alternative technology. Other countries have done it. You see, you may say we may not have all the monies, but if we started 20 years ago, dealing with it the way it should be dealt with true technology. By now, we may have finished. You can't expand the Mukose drain, which is a major storm drain, draining mm. Dakuman, North Kaneshi, Abeka, Aveno, huge storm drain. You can't, it's been heavily built. It runs through the North industrial area. You can't go and pull down the industries now. So what do you do? You have to find an alternative way for the water. Maybe you have to construct underground pipes and so on. So I'm saying, if you started 20 years ago, that look, this is the plan. Mm. Maybe it's a 10-year plan. And you started because you don't have all the monies. By now, you would have finished. You see? So it boils down to failure, failure, failure over the years. 
then they say they are going to desert the the Odon. I mean, we've been deserting since I was a little boy. And yet we see the yes, flash. So the obviously, the certain is not what is going to. Let, let me the, put the certain worsens it. I mean, if you don't discern, but mm. that is not the problem. Let me put this question to Doctor Haji. So, uh, 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 the back stops are the doorsteps of those with executive power. I, I clearly, um, if you recall what the president said at, uh, when they when the the incident happened mm. or the disaster happened, he said he he, he okay. actually made a pledge that he was going to take. Uh, action to ensure that it didn't happen anymore. Now, the next action that followed that was the 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 demolition exercise that started in I think um, Fadama old old Fadama. Mm. Now, what happened? The same people who were victims who, who were uh, victims and then uh, who were at risk were the ones who went into the streets and started shouting and complaining that the AMA said it was going to drain the, the, the and then it extended it beyond that and then it got into a political game people were moved out of Accra and, and the president were, stopped because of that? the president didn't stop the exercise was completed that particular one was completed they moved w a little way into the residential uh, properties or mm. area now what that did was to send a signal that look this is an indication that if you don't allow the process the, the, the drain to be opened up the next time you are at risk. And so he did that. I, I, I want to discount the idea that there wasn't any political will. There has been political will all the time. But now, nothing, not, there are nothing engineering has been solutions done. that mm. are, are being applied. Problem. It takes a little time. Now, as, as, as uh, my colleague mentioned, if you don't do it over time and you use an approach that involves responding when the disaster happens and then making the uh, comment that it will be dealt with. You don't, you, you don't solve the problem. And you probably know that we are looking at long-term planning now. Those are part of it. The construction of drains and infrastructure programs are part of the process of solving this problem once and for all. I mentioned that there's construction going on. Where, as, as, as was proposed, where you can't expand the drains, you need to look at alternatives, yes. But there are places where uh, uh, the drains can be, can be expanded, and that will be done. I see. Grateful uh, for that submission. Uh, Nana, Nana, but quickly before I move on to the the uh, uh, second issue, you, you you're thinking that if we have that political will, we can deal with this. But is this simply a matter of political will? Because we 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 keep killing people. I mean, people die almost every every year out of these flats, and yet we, we don't get solution. It's simply political will. Yeah, but don't what what else do you think is the problem? We we'll have the money to go into that kind of modern construction. I don't. I don't want streets. to even talk about some of the things that we use our monies for. Mm. I mean, we will not live here this morning if we were to talk about the instances where public monies have been wasted, either stolen through corruption or just wasted. I don't want to get into that. But I'm saying that it may be expensive. Mm. But have the plan. What is the plan? What is the plan? Say that, look, we are going to construct A, B, C, D. This is what the engineers have told us would work. It will cost two cities. We don't have two cities. So we have to do it over five years. Right. You see, then you know that something concrete is being done. Now, my, my, my brother here is telling us uh, this is... You, you don't even know what has been done. And you are a media person. Your job is to find out what has been done. Mm. You don't know. So obviously, nothing is being done. <laughs> okay? If you're going to remove a few houses, what have you done? When, when the, uh, uh, Kwame, the last year after June, mm. after June 3rd, Kwame Nkrumah, just here, um, you know the small road where there's a bridge? Right. Small bridge, just mm. at the second. Mm. The AMA went and removed some of the containers on the pavement. Hmm? Why should we allow containers on pavements? There must be a solution. There are people who have been elected and been paid to think through these problems. So we wait for flooding for people to die. Then we're going to remove a few containers from the, from a, a hundred uh, meter stretch. How would that stop flooding? 
And the last two weeks, these few rains, and this, these are not heavy rains, mm. there was flooding, weren't they? You covered it on your stage. Yeah, two weeks so, ago, yes. on, over the weekend. And, and since June 3rd, what is the announced plan which you can monitor? Have you, have you had any... The president said, uh, um, it's not going to happen again, it's not going to happen again. Where is the plan? Well, we're told that the dredging, because of the dredging, uh, the, 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 the flooding was minimal. That's what we're told. So that's the solution. We'll dredge the door. <laughs> you see, you're laughing. <laughs> well, do you Dr. Hadi, you're not coming at things I'm laughing. Yeah, but, but you see, which is it's, it's a choice between the devil and the deep blue. Mm. If you don't dredge, the backflow will be even more. It'll be worse. Mm. If you dredge, it reduces the volume of water that collects at any particular point. But let's not forget that last year's uh, disaster, it's not only flooding. It wasn't only flooding. It was flooding and fire. And the fire wasn't caused by the fact that there wasn't any political will. The fire was, was a natural accident. The fire was caused <laughs> by the flooding. Oh, right, yeah. so, so there was a but, link there. But the, the, yeah. the, the fire was caused the by the Fuel on, yeah. on the yeah. water. But, but and that, yeah. the fuel station had a problem. There was some technical problem with the fuel station. Mm -hmm. So yes, the, 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 the fire was caused by the flooding. But I'm saying that some of it is our responsibility as, as a people. Mm. Uh, people are still doing the things that they do. Why should we be desilting? The, the silting occurs uh, partly because people drop the, uh, garbage in the drains. Mm. It happens because perhaps the, the banks of the, of, of the drains push back uh, sand and all those things. So part of it is our own, our own uh, uh, doing. And we, we have to change the way we do things. But, but, but that, we, have, we have authorities to to check these things, people from dumping refuse in drains and all that. Yeah, but you see, that is after the, we, we after the event. Do we need to prevent the, 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 the bad behavior, at least as a people. We need to do that so you don't create a problem and then think that somebody is somebody's responsibility to enforce the rules. So, mm. yes, if they don't, then you can blame them. No, do your part. But if the sanitation courts are not working, people can go and throw refuse and won't get punished, certainly they will continue to do it. Well, I won't speak for the courts, right. uh, but you know there is a program for ensuring that every every other uh, month we clean up uh, the rubbish that we dump in the places. It so didn't work. The sanitation did mm -hmm. didn't work. Well, I, I'm wondering if it's still alive. It is. I haven't heard about it, it for see, quite look, some time. Uh, uh, Mr. Haji, doc, no, sorry, doctor. No, I didn't don't worry about that. I didn't go to too much school. No, don't so don't I respect worry about people that. who went to school. <laughs> I have just have one first degree. Now, you see, it's not fair to blame Ghanaians. It's not fair. If, if be, be, they, be, they, they are simply they flouting the rules the, and no. regulations? That's why there are laws. Okay? So if you don't enforce the laws, huh? you see, it's the same Ghanaian like you and me. When we go to England, hmm? we don't go and dump our refuse in the Thames River. Why? Of course, you get punished. Because one, there's provision for you where you should dump your refuse, isn't there? And two, the laws will not, you, you will not, the enforcement will not allow you to go and dump your refuse in the drain. You know what I'm saying? So, in the swarm areas in this country, even in the planned areas, what is the situation with refuse collection? The refuse gets filled up. And overflows onto the streets. So mm. when it rains, the rains themselves carry the refuse. Because they haven't been collected. They're supposed to be collected maybe every three days. They are collected one week. Don't you see them all the time? Go to airport. Go to don't you see refuse? People put their uh, beans by the road and it's filled and it's sitting there. Mm? Then the slums. There are no facilities. You understand? So it's not fair to blame the Ghanaian. Because that same Ghanaian, when he goes to a place where there's a prop, uh, availability of refuse disposal, mm. he doesn't go and dump it in the, in the gutter. So let we politicians sit up. Hmm? You've been, you campaign. I would improve things. You have voted for. The taxes are at your disposal. You borrow all the money in the world. Mm. Do what you have to do. If you believe it's a priority. At the end of the day, it comes to political will. Look, look, look at this Odor thing. This certain is not going to help much. 
said you have to expand the odor. This project called Kole Lagoon Ecological Range. I'm sure you the heard about it. The country project. 20 years ago. The major problem was that because Sodom and Gomorrah was there, you couldn't do the expansion of the odor. Because if you expand it, then it can con the odor basin can contain about five times the what water. That's now. Yes. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah. Who allowed Sodom and Gomorrah to be there? Because when I was growing up, it was pack. We used to go and play football there. Who allowed it? Which mayor of Accra allowed it? Kwame Nkrumah moved people from there. That's why it's called Old Fadama. So the place was evacuated because of flooding. Who allowed it to be there? What has been done to that person as mayor? Who allowed it to be there? And it was there for 20 years. And because of that one main reason, we couldn't do the Kole Lagoon expansion. And everybody suffers. And the politicians are sitting there. And you're going to blame the people? Well, Honorary Carwell, mm -hmm. Doctor, wrap up for me. Let, let's move on to another issue, Doctor. Okay. Oh, well, I, I think basically, you see, Adabra uh, Kumia uh, and I would not dump rubbish in a drain, mm. you know, but the people would do that. And why, why can't we blame them for doing what because they, they should do? Because they don't have the facilities for waste disposal. Just, just this morning as I was coming, in front of um, the Perez Chapel, there's a bus stop. There's a bus stop, and then they, they, the people have dumped rubbish right there at the bus stop. It is people who did it. They're, so they're waiting for somebody to collect. That's where they sit to catch a bus. But they've done that. Just as you said, when I was growing up in Accra, I grew up in Accra. We had all the beans around Accra. Mm. And they, they, there are all these exercises, don't litter. So you carry your rubbish. When you get out of the bus, you drop it in the bin. There are some there, but people are still not using the beans. We would, I, I'm not holding brief for the fact that there are responsibilities that should be performed by institutions that have the task to do so. But we also have a responsibility to ensure that we don't create the problems in the first place. I'm grateful. Let's move on to the Ghanaian time. Now, this story uh, was uh, from yesterday. Uh, the minority there questioning uh, the survival of the Commander Sugar Factory. And according to the minority, uh, the commissioning or inauguration of the factory is for uh, political advantage because we don't have uh, the raw materials to get that uh, facility running. Uh, they think that uh, perhaps uh, we should have waited and gotten the raw materials uh, properly. Uh, ready before uh, not greeting uh, the factory. Uh, Dr. Haji, is this factory indeed inaugurated uh, because President Mahama wants to win votes? No, a big no. A big no. It's similar to the presidential special initiatives on cassava. Mm. You, you, a lot of work has been done uh, in, in, in terms of uh, supply of raw uh, sugar cane for crushing. And the, the, it's, it's, it's not intended for the area only. There's a lot of sugarcane production from, other parts, of the from other parts of the country. And there are, there are programs to ensure that those ones are transported to the factory on a, on a regular basis. So what will be used in the production is not an issue. Now, there are other plans to, to, to actually grow sugarcane and, and on, on, on a huge uh, scale. Um, there, there are things I've seen that a point to the fact that the supply will not be a challenge at all. If that is the basis for claiming that the factory is not going to be functional, I think that's, that's wrong. The, 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 the minorities also talk about the fact that the irrigation system that used to water uh, uh, the field, the sugarcane field from the Pratt uh, River is uh, collapsed and so perhaps we should have fixed that before. Open, well, that's the point the I'm making that it's not limited to the commander area only. Mm -hmm. There are sources where, where, uh, from which sugarcane uh, can be can be uh, collected and brought to the factory for you. So yes, the, it, the, the irrigation system is not even an issue. The land on which the irrigation is, or, or was done in the past is, has been occupied by people. They've, mm. they've, they bought that land anyway. So why would you want to go and waste money and produce a, a, a fix an irrigation system that would not be used uh, uh, in, the, in that particular area. So there are plants across the country, and that's very easy to move. So the fact if you can recall, all create right from had, the, the date of inauguration, it can't... Oh, it has gone into operation because it's brought sugar cane from other parts of the country. And there are programs to ensure that it's moved from different parts of the country to the factory on a regular basis. I, I, don't, I don't see the point that's been made up because the, you don't see visible sugarcane plantations, the factories. I mean, who would go and put that much money in that area and, 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 and invest that much money in that area when the person knows that there's not going to be a supply of raw material? That would have been a waste. I see. It can't happen. There are outgrower schemes that have been uh, planned 
to happen, and they actually have started some of them. Perhaps what we will do to uh, to assure the NPP that this is going to happen is perhaps we'll do what we did with the accounting to the people. <laughs> go go. You put show it in the, the green book. We'll put it in the green book. Okay. <laughs> let me pay, let me go. Another Nanaku green book. Another green book. Nana, so uh, you, uh, the minority is simply uh, crying wolf when there's nothing. Well, thank you. Um, you see, I'm sure you know the latest story about the Commander Sugar Factory. I'm sure you do. <laughs> But what, what is the latest story? Well, I know it's been commissioned. It's been inaugurated. No, no. That's all yes, I mean. that was a, a week ago. A week ago. What is happening this morning? What is happening? Well, I, I have no idea. It's been well, closed. Okay. That's according to the Nakomia. No, no, no. In the newspapers. Yo, okay. The reports. <laughs> okay. No, look through all your right. newspapers. Oh, okay. All right. It's been closed. But, but, but I, well, I have... I, I, that's, I um, only have two papers. There, there's one uh, here. Uh, this one. Uh, no sugar cane uh, for... No sugar cane for Commander Factory. Three, three days after, after inauguration. inauguration. That's from the Ghanaian Observer. But I it, don't have any information as well. You know, there were um, noises being made mm. that the thing would work for six months and then it would close for six months. You heard it. For r routine maintenance. Now... Which factory works for six months and then it is closed for another six months for maintenance? Which factory in the world? Or oh, this is the only factory in the world producing sugar. No, which factory will work for six months and cl close for six months for maintenance? So when I heard it, I was like, has the regional minister been misquoted? Then we heard that, oh, it will work for one month and then it will be closed for all kinds of... And then this morning as we speak, it has been closed. The factory that was... I'm not sure Dr. Ahadji knows this. I haven't seen that Well, yet. the factory that was coming... Everybody is laughing all over the country. Because of that? Because of this. Everybody is laughing that the factory that was commissioned... Was it this week? I think it was Monday. Today Monday, is Friday. Right. Monday, four days ago... It's been closed. It's going to be closed for months. I'm surprised you don't know this. The current situation, as you and I speak, is that the factory that was commissioned mm. only four days ago has been closed this morning. It's in the, and it's in the, half the newspapers and the reviewers are all laughing. They, could, they can't believe it. So, obviously. Those are stories from the newspapers. They are Ob stories from the newspapers. Yes, okay. obviously. Obviously. I thought you had official uh, information. Please, you have Rosa. a producer. Right. Let them check. He, he, I mean, he will check. Let them go he, on the he, net. He, he'll quickly yes. cross check. Let them go on the net. But it so will be that. stories on the internet. No, no, it's in the newspapers. Right. But you only have three newspapers. Okay. Okay. But you see, obviously, the factory was not ready for commissioning. I mean, that's the bottom line. The factory was not ready. Where are the raw materials? Because... Not somebody growing some one acre sugar cane at uh, 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 Bunsu or in Sutem, if you go to my hometown. People grow sugar cane by the river mm. banks. It is not that kind of thing that's going to feed an industrial plant. You need an art grower scheme. Huge plantation for sugar cane. Dr. Hajith says it's been worked on. After the commission. That's what he said. And that already uh, sugarcane is being brought from across the country. My brother, from, from where? They are going around people's farm in Bunsu and in Sutem <laughs> and Bronga Hafo and Ashanti and cutting sugarcane and bringing it to uh, Commander. I mean, please. And this factory, you started building it two years ago mm -hmm. or three years ago. The sugarcane takes one year to mature. Hmm? One year to mature. So you have to have an everywhere in the world where there's sugar cane, there's an outgrower skin. Farmers with thousands of hectares who who grow sugar cane because you have to feed a factory. Have you worked in a factory before? No, 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 uh, not exactly. It's not like television. The machines keep running. When you stop the machine, you are losing money. You are, because when you stop an industrial machine to restart it, it's a major problem. So when the machine starts, you don't stop it. So it is not now that you are going to go to you know, all kinds of one acre, half acre sugar cane and cut them and say that's what it's not. You have to have an outgrower scheme. There's no outgrower scheme. So what I think the government intends to do is to import the cane and process it into sugar. That's what they plan to do. They don't have, like you say, the land in Commander, which used to feed the factory, have all been encroached. Mm. So you're not going to get that 
land available, 1,000 acres, 2,000 acres with farmers. When you talk about 7,000 jobs, why are you going to get a 7,000 job? From an outgrower scheme. You don't have an outgrower scheme. And now you've closed the factory. They said they've closed it for three months or so. So the, those 7,000 people, where are they? The problem with this government, the, the, one of the main problems, I mean, they have many problems, corruption and you know, all of that. <laughs> but I, what, I, can, another, I, can, I can hear Dr. Haji smile. Another <laughs> major problem this government has is propaganda. You see, you are, you are not ready. The factory is not ready. Why did you rush to commission it with all the fanfare? Why? Because as you and I are speaking, is the factory in production? Well, I'm unable to tell it. Because you see, I, I, in, in, in any place now. where people are thinking rationally, you have a big plan like a factory. It starts working for two months, three months, before even the, the whole president goes to commission. That's what will be done in, in, in a rational system. But here, they go and do plenty fanfare. The president goes there and makes a great speech. Chiefs are dancing and you know, singing for the president. Women are dancing and laying down their cloth for the president. Then two days later, the factory is closed down. Isn't it propaganda? Let me ask the, it, it, Dr. It, it, Haji this question because you seem to be repeating. Is the factory closed? No, it isn't. You see, this is a public-private um, partnership arrangement. There were investors from outside. I mean, I'm saying it again that you are not going to bring people or people will not invest that much money in, in a factory for which they would they will get no returns. I mean, there are arrangements to ensure that the factory produces sugar. And as I mentioned so, earlier, so, so the it scheme, is not an the issue scheme, of the, propaganda. The scheme no. isn't there. The outdoor the scheme, scheme is talking there. about isn't that is there. The part of but the it's been seven, worked on. Yeah, that's the, the president said it. So if, obviously, if he came up with 7,300 uh, uh, people, there are, there are indications that they are part of this entire process of ensuring that the factory works. Mm. They are part of the outgrowth scheme. They are part of the production team. They are part of the, the transportation team. All of that has been factored into all those people. So why is the factory to... closed as we speak? You are saying well, the I, factory we'll, we'll is closed. We'll try to get our correspondent in Cape Coast to, to, to feed us on that uh, from what Nana said. But uh, Nana is suggesting that, look, this factory started two years ago. Could we have had the, the, the art growers scheme running? Could we have had all the necessary uh, things in place before opening or even allowing the factory to, to, to operate for two, three, four, five, six months before getting the commission? The, the point I have made continuously is that the part of this whole exercise is, you see, when you, when you, when you begin production, uh, you don't discontinue the production for right. lack of raw material. Mm. So at the point that you want, perhaps there's a reason why they, they decided that they, they would commission it now, let it run for some time. It, it, it can, they can test run it and just right. see the problems that would occur when the main production system starts. It may be for a simple reason of just ensuring that the factory is working according to design. So it's not, it's not what somebody wants to, uh, to, to gain political points in saying that it's, it's been open and it's been shut. You need to find out exactly what has happened. Mm -hmm. Now the point is, as I said, it could just be that you want to ensure that at least the, all the challenges that will come when you begin the actual process are, are catered for. So you need to run it in the, the initial stages to find out the problems. And I guess that, that may account for the fact that even if it is, if it is, if they shut down briefly, I don't think that it is for because there is no planning or there is no resource, there is no uh, raw material for it to produce. It may be for technical reasons, mm. simple technical reasons. I mean, the factory is not going to be uh, 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 kind of collapsed or, or, or take. Uh, destroyed because there's no raw material. And if I make an investment like that, I'll obviously ensure that I receive the resources to uh, raw materials to get it to, to work. It's not propaganda. It can never be propaganda. It is also an attempt to reduce the huge amount of money that we use in importing sugar. $250 million? Yes. You, know, you want to save on that because there's a lot of pressure on your foreign exchange. You won't go and put that much money there just because you want to win political points. That's a bad investment. No government will do that. Mm. FPP won't do it. Mm. We won't do that either. Mm.
I see. But you can confirm that the factory is not closed. I'm, I haven't had any, okay. anything right. to the contrary. All right. We'll, we'll get a, a man now, there to, see, to, my, to my, feed us my, in on that. I mean, I'm, I'm saying the factory has been closed. Okay. Let your producers check. <laughs> they will check now. But you see, my brother, something is even more fundamental. You know, everybody in this country, particularly our leaders, mm. they've all agreed that the main problem we face with our economy is that we, 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 we produce raw materials. We don't add value. We don't add value to our cocoa. We don't add value to our timber. We don't add value to our pineapple. You know, everything is exported raw. Mm. And then you, take, you add more money to import chocolate, to import furniture, you see. So it, one of the key reasons why we are poor, the second reason is that we don't have industrial capacity. So we import everything. We import newsprints. We import biscuits. Toothpick. We import toothpick. We import mango juice. We import tomato uh, paste, everything. So it drains our foreign exchange. It makes our city weak. It increases the cost of life for every gun. Yeah? So it's a good idea that the commander will, will one produce second. sugar. One second. So everybody says we have to change the structure of the Ghanaian economy. They call it paradigm shift. We have to shift from raw material production, uh, import value dependence, addition. value addition, what's called value addition, add value to the cocoa. If you turn it into chocolate, you get more money. Instead of exporting cocoa and importing chocolate. Mm. So every president, every political leader has talked about changing the structure. Now, this government comes into office in the last seven and a half years. They have borrowed what they themselves admit to. They have borrowed 18 billion. 18 billion dollars. Every government borrows. No, no. I, I have no doubt about it. Right. You, you've borrowed 18 billion dollars. No government has borrowed that amount of money. Okay. Number two, because of the oil that President Kufu found, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. government since 2010 has gotten $3 billion from the oil alone. So that's about $21 billion foreign exchange receipts from loans and from oil. The president had said, you have to have a paradigm shift. You have to add value. You have to industrialize. Look at the money they've put into manufacturing, which all of them agree with what will change the structure of the economy. 20 million for a shoe factory in Kumasi. 30 million for the pharmaceutical industry. 35 million for Comenda. That's less than 100 million dollars out of 21 billion. Now, you have agreed that manufacturing is what is going to take us out of the woods and strengthen our currency. And you have the money, 21 billion. I'm not saying they've chopped it, but you put only 100 million into manufacturing. Are you serious? Are you serious as a government? Are you serious as a president? Are there not other areas that will need the same kind of funding because the manufacturing uh, industry won't be on their own alone? I mean, need you to need some linkage. You, you need to have so roads. You, you, need, you need to have roads. Mm. You need to have electricity. Mm. But every government does roads. Every government does a bit of electricity. Rollins did a Boise. Yeah? Kufu did a Bui Dam, a, a Sogli, uh, the, the Zakem, and all of that. But when every, everybody does electricity. But there's a missing link. And every president talks about that missing link. That missing link is getting the factories to produce to add value to our raw material and also to substitute for the imports, to be able to be self-sufficient in biscuits, in chocolate. Our cocoa is the best in the world. How can we import so much chocolate? You have the best cocoa. You go to Japan, the Ghanaian made chocolate. It's mm -hmm. the most expensive. How can when you go to the shops and there are 10 varieties of chocolate, only one is made in Ghana and we import. So we said we have to correct it because people take dollars. Now you've got in. 21 billion, including 3 billion free from oil, and you've invested only 100. If you've got 21 billion, you know that what will save the Ghanaian is the manufacturing. At least put 50% uh, of it. Oh, not in 50, but maybe two, man. They will, they know. <laughs> you put 30%. Put 5 billion. I don't want to get into. 
politics, because otherwise I'll tell you, the money given to Wayomi, $35 million, could have built the sugar factory. Sugar factory. That 100 million chop free in Jida, hmm? the Jida one, the 100 million Jida alone, could have built Kumasi, uh, 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 Commenda, and still for other, maybe a mango processing and a, and, a, and a pineapple processing. That 100 million to Jida. The Sada, you know, the uh, 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 bank switch, 100 million free for somebody cancel the contract. You know, but you forget about those ones. I'm saying that the monies that we've borrowed, 18 mm. billion plus 3 billion oil, you say, you the president and the government, you say that we have to change the structure of the economy. And the money that you've put into that process is only, is less than 1% of that whole amount. And, and even, I'm grateful. And even that 1%, Commander, is not wet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> close that. <laughs> Better had you so the, the, the manufacturing sector is what will, will take us out of uh, the wood. Commander is there. But it, really, uh, what is it that perhaps is preventing government from investing more as uh, than Akumia seemed to allege? You see, if you build factories in a... Uh, um, in an isolated area and you don't have electricity, mm. you don't have water, you don't have roads le leading to those places, what have you done? You haven't done anything. So the fact that I, 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 these figures that have been thrown up are, 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 um, are, are figures that we have to cross check. But you see, you don't, you don't just estimate that we receive so much money and we've just mm. done, uh, we've used just 10% uh, to no, to, no. Oh, please. But let me less than one percent. Less than one percent. <laughs> now, investments have been made in other other sectors of the economy. You know, the some countries are just service. Um, 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 they depend on service, and they they are just All as, right. as comfortable. There's you know, so there are issues about where the money is spent. It's not just for for construction of or building of factories that will change the structure of the economy. No. Okay. You need to invest in infrastructure, in different forms of infrastructure. They create the basis for industrial growth. You need to provide telecommunication services, you need to provide the roads, you need to provide the uh, uh, utilities for these things to work. Otherwise, Dr. Haji, you, you hang on there. I'll come back to you. But let's go to uh, Cape Coast and speak to uh, our man there. We're trying uh, to get him to uh, uh, tell us exactly what's the state of the Commander Ship Factory. Uh, some information we're getting is indicating that it's been uh, closed. Uh, Thomas uh, Khan is out there. Uh, Thomas, good morning. And good morning. Mm, uh, uh, thanks so much. Now, what can you tell us about the factory, which was opened just a few days ago? Um, well, um, what, what I can say is that um, I visited the factory just yesterday, and you could see some activities going on there. Um, some of the activities that I observed was that uh, I saw some trucks uh, with loads of sugar cane entering the yard. At least I counted about five Kia trucks entering, and uh, two uh, farm trucks also with um, sugar cane loads entering the yard. Um, though security did not allow me to go inside, I could hear um, some sounds that uh, I would say uh, were some machine because um, the very first day the statue was commissioned, I was there. So I could uh, conclude that, um, that that sound was coming from um, where the sugarcane was being crushed and some sort of activity uh, to, to have um, maybe sugar over there. Mm. And again, um, I saw some um, what I can describe may be some work going on, on and something I can also describe as uh, some chance, I don't know the technical names, but right. I saw some work being done on those tanks over there. All right. Now, so, you, you, Thomas, uh, uh, tell me, is the factory closed or not? 
I would I can't say if it is close or not. But um like I said, I could see and hear some activities going on there. So I can't conclude that the factory uh, the factory is closed because I could hear and see activities going up and down there with machines, sounds of machines over there. So I can't say the machine uh, the factory is closed. All right, Thomas Khan, I'm grateful. He's a man in the central region, Cape Coast, precisely, talking to now, us about my brother, We'll give you more the, updates on the, that. Me, doctor, I haven't mm. said don't construct roads or don't do electricity. Nobody has said so. Mm. Yes. Do the roads. Do that. But are you ever going to finish electricity before you do factories? Are you ever going to finish roads? You've been constructing roads since Gogisbeck, when your great-grandfather's days. Uh -huh. So we can't say that we are constructing. How much have you invested in factories, which you yourself have said is what to change the structure and bring the jobs mm. and bring the foreign exchange okay. and stabilize the city and bring prices down? You've, you've had 21 billion. You've invested less than 1%. Less than 1%. And then when we ask you, you say, what, we are constructing roads? But I the the roads are linked to the fact that that's what doctor yeah, is saying. but we've been constructing you, roads yeah. forever. You, you, you were, you were if, wrapping look, up on If you this. went to uh, uh, America today, they are mm. constructing roads. <laughs> it's an industrialized country. Right. Kwame Nkrumah style, the roads in Ghana were not half what it is today. He built 200 factories. Because, you see, that is what we've all agreed would change the economy. Yeah, I, I still have to go back to the point I'm making that the roads don't lead from, they, they, they ordinarily will have to lead from the farm gate to the main road and to the factories. Now, if you send it to the farms, you create opportunity for people to grow more raw material for the factory. So even if you are industrializing, you still have to ensure that the sources of your raw materials also receive the, the, the volumes of investment that will ensure constant flow of raw materials to the industry. So you, you want to change the structure of the economy, but that doesn't mean that you shift all the resources into, into just one of the uh, sectors of the economy. Yes, is, is services, that, that sector agree. The, 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 the what would turn the economy around? But you see, that sector has to be fed. It has to be fed by raw materials from... But that's yeah, the yeah, point we're just, making just, about you just value just one percent of that. No, but that's, 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 that's so his figure. I don't, I don't know where okay, that's figures, his figure. Okay, that's his figure. I don't know where that figure comes from. But the, I, I, again, the investment has been, has been made in different sectors of the economy. Now, his preference would be to throw virtually... I don't know what percentage he would like to have in the manufacturing sector. He's, he but talks about 30. He says, well, if you drop in 30, he has an option. Yeah, he has a, no, but that's his estimation. That's his estimation that we, perhaps we need to put in 30% because we are talking about services, agri and industry. So perhaps uh, as, agri as uh, 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 industry or manufacturing should get 30%. But we are using a different approach. That's our option. And that approach is working? It's working for us. The pe people still on the street. We, we, are, not, we are not bound not to getting change. Work to you do. don't change the structure of the economy over, over, over a four or eight year or a ten year period. Uh, particularly when it's been so stable over so many years. You would have noticed that the contributions of the different sectors are changing. Now services produce uh, the bigger uh, uh, part of the GDP. I, industry is there and agri is there. Which, so, some, which some have kicked against because they think that it's not too good. Well, why are they, why are they saying it's but not too good? But they think that the, the manufacturing sector should be the key. It, so you, do the, you prepare so you can shift to manufacturing. That's exactly what we're trying to do. If we, if we abandon the, uh, uh, agricultural production, the next time around, there will be a lot of problems in, in trying to support the manufacturing sector. Unless it's not... It's not uh, uh, raw material based, local raw material based. Otherwise, the, the accusation will come, okay, you've killed a Greek, you have to import sugar cane to feed a factory that you But is a Greek even getting the, the needed support? Oh, yeah. To sure. Last growth we recorded, not, not, not good news at all. There's, you see, the, 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 there are issues around computations, but there are issues also around actual production. Food security, I mean, we are eating close to ensuring that the 
we don't have problems about food uh, and uh, the, the availability of food on the market. The pricing is a different story. The leader of the opposition party recently uh, said plantain is imported, even though government has come out to deny that. Oh, that's, poli that's political uh, talk. Sure. That's political talk. Because you can see the plantain trucks coming in every day from, from the hinterland. I mean, uh, that's, just, that's just political talk. We, not, we don't take that particularly seriously. I see. You see Grateful. Uh, they, no, no, quick, they, and then we'll go yeah, to our last topic for um, this morning. You have to construct hospitals. Because when workers get sick, or when people are sick, they cannot go and work in the factories. So you have to construct hospitals. You have to construct schools. Because when people are not educated, they cannot be an efficient workforce. Mm -hmm. So you have to do all of that. Mm -hmm. And everywhere you go in the world, they are constructing schools. They are constructing hospitals. The missing link is the manufacturing, like you said, the missing link. So if you've got 21 billion and you put even 5 billion in manufacturing and then the rest in the, it, 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 people would see that there's vibrancy in the economy. And he says he doubts my figures. Because of this government's love for propaganda. Well, he says he doesn't. Yes, I'm saying because of this government's love for propaganda, when they do some small thing, they will blow it up. Uh, <laughs> so we knew of the Kumasi shoe factory, $20 million. Mm. We know of the one they gave to the pharmaceuticals. They took them to parliament and showcased them. That, look, we've given them and they had them stand up and salute. So we know the money you put into pharmacy, $30 million. And we know the money you put into Commander, $35 million. Where else? Where else? Even if it's, I'm saying, man, but are you not embarrassed that out of twenty-one billion dollars, your government has invested less than one hundred in manufacturing? And then this business about plantain, there's food shortage as we speak, reflected in the prices. You don't know. You 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 TV three, uh, my brother. You TV three. You go to the, you make the reports. You tell us. <laughs> don't you have After, you think that it's just uh, propaganda? It's just no, no, my brother. So what you report is propaganda. Because well, I have not said that. It's TV it three. Yeah, but you have to tell him. It's but about the plantain issue that we import in play. He says no. Uh, the trucks are coming in, and so it's just. But the trucks are coming from Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. Go to the market and ask the traders where they are getting the plantain because. Some of your colleagues' media houses, mm. they go and speak to the women and they tell you that, we, you know, we have imported from Cote d'Ivoire. They tell you, the people who are doing the business, they tell you where they get it from. If you like, after this, let your reporters go to the market All and right. speak to the market. All right, and now we'll do that. Okay, I'm grateful. Now let's shift uh, to our last issue this morning. The uh, government uh, does not intend to introduce new taxes. That's President uh, Maham. Now, now let me start with you. We have just about some few minutes to wrap up. Now, How many minutes do you have? Oh, just about uh, six minutes. This issue of taxes and the fact that uh, there was talk about pensions being taxed and the government coming in to say no, it, it, it is not even possible under the Constitution because uh, the, 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 the Constitution bars that. Is it reassuring when President Mahama says we don't intend to introduce new taxes? But he said the same thing in 2012. And you're saying he has repeated it. No, I'm saying <laughs> go to his. <laughs> I see. He said the same thing. In so, I'm, I'm, so I'm so sad I didn't bring the maiden press conference he made. I, I see. So, um, and look at the taxes these people have brought onto Ghanaians. They've removed subsidies. Electricity, there's no subsidy. Petrol, there's no subsidy. That's taxation. They've increased VAT from 15 and half, uh, 15 to 17 and a half. They've put it on petrol. They've put it on electricity. Even with this electricity, they still managed to slap a seven cities flat fee, a 10 CD, a 10% 10 10 service charge, and a 17 and a half VAT on electricity after removing the subsidies. These people are killing Ghanaians. Ghanaians are crying in the wilderness. The cost of life in Ghana today, my brother, is just too much. Now, you are a government, you say you are coming to improve lives. What you've done is worsen it. You see, you've worsened it. You've removed subsidies on the things, electricity, water, petrol. You've increased new taxes on, on utilities. Taxes that were not there, you've brought them. The subsidies that were there, you've removed them. Mm. This whole business about, I don't I think the finance minister was talking about in how it was necessary to impose taxes on 
pension allowances. You know? That is the thinking. That's the thinking of it. So people are allowed. So the president too is trying to massage it. But the constitution bars that. I don't bars what? To, uh, imposing taxes on, on pensions. I don't have anything to do. My brother, they intend to impose taxes on your capital gains <laughs> from your pension. I see. Yes. Let me speak to Dr. Hadi. Dr. Hadi, is that what you're trying to do? I restrict myself to <laughs> the, the particular uh, newspaper item that we are discussing. The president mm -hmm. has said that mm -hmm. there will be no... Uh, no more taxes. That's between Particular, now and the elections. Even if it happens, that's fine. Mm. Isn't that, wouldn't that be a relief? <laughs> Do you want some more taxes between the elections? So after the elections? <laughs> no, I, I didn't say that. Is but it? I think basically what the president <laughs> confirmed is that there, there was speculation and probably they just railroaded the, uh, the Minister for Finance into a corner for him to make uh, a statement like that and then the usual uh, thing it was blown out of proportion he never even made a policy statement it was just a contribution he was making and then the the, the usual reportage changed the thing to look as as though there's going to be another tax on on, on allowances that's what he, he said he was just it was just basically a presentation and he was looking at where money can be raised and the president has put the matter to rest he's saying that he doesn't intend to impose any more taxes on Ghanaians, and particularly mm. that particular pension tax is not going to be imposed. Matter closed. Matter finished. I mean, there's no need to stretch this issue into the forms of taxes. Taxes are important mm. for raising revenue, particularly when Ghana has, been, Ghana has shifted from a lower, lower income country to a lower middle income country, and the windows of accessing credit from these our development partners have shut. So you need to raise the money domestically. Otherwise, you buy money at very high cost. So that is one way you can raise money. But too much imposition of taxes can also be... Exactly. That's what I was going to ask you. That if the president said... Because it depends on the tax that you impose. If it's mm -hmm. direct, then you're limiting it to those who earn income directly, and then you can do that. Dr. Haji, some, I'm not cutting sorry for cutting. Some of our that, look, you're taking too much from some few group of persons. There's a wider uh, 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 group that is, is not being taxed at That's all. That's the point I'm making that mm. if it's direct taxes, then you're you are, you are actually drawing it from just a small number right. of people who are employed. Mm. There are forms of indirect taxes. And the indirect taxes can be very regressive if it is too high on a, on a tin of milk mm. or on some of these products. And, and we, we need to balance that. I mean, tax administration involves a lot of ensuring that at least those who are outside the tax next, who can pay, mm. pay. Yeah, and it, it's graduated sometimes in, the, in a way that those who have the ability to pay more, pay more. It happens everywhere in the world. And all governments, all governments depend on taxation as the source of uh, re revenue to, to prosecute the development agenda. I see. Okay, let's speak directly uh, to this story. Uh, okay. I mean, I mean, Dr. Haji <laughs> wanted right. to speak there. Okay, this is what the graphic is saying. Setekbe in Accra last Tuesday said, and they quote him, mm -hmm. yes, allowances. allowances must be taxed. They are income. Okay. Now the president say, the, pres the government does not intend to introduce new taxes. Mm. What period? <laughs> what period? Is it before the elections? Is it forever? You know, this is the kind of speak that when you quote it back to them, they say, hey, hey, you know, that that it, he said allowances are income that can be taxed. And so must be taxed. No, no, no. He said allowances no, that's a must. Report. It must be taxed. That's a report. No, this is a quotation. There is a quotation that's in there. And, and this the, is not I one. I trust that when the, they can come up with stories that are legitimate. <laughs> but, but you see, I see. All right. No, fine. No, okay. Haji, look, Dr. Haji has a good sense of humor. No problem. <laughs> but you see, my brother, this is the daily graphic. All right. Look, look at it. Look at the paper. That this is, is the daily the, graphic. The daily graphic. So it's absolutely credible. Now, they, and they quote. This is not a report. Look, right. this is in quotation. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, allowances must allowance be taxed. Tax. They are income. I see. And then the president said, oh, we don't need new taxes. Even what the president is, what does it mean? No new taxes before the elections? All right. Anyway. And after the elections. <laughs> no, I'm grateful. These <laughs> people deceive us every day. <laughs> Dr. Instead of Dr. Haji them. doesn't think so. But the evidence is there. Look, the evidence is what I'm showing All right. No, I'm grateful. Oh, so, Sami Krab lost the case to your party? Yes, yes. No, no okay. okay. It's okay. I mean, the party has expected. It's a good one for the party. I well, guess. the party has always expected okay. that you, the, the, the party's case is very strong. Okay. So we don't have a problem. I mean, okay. we don't see it as a victory. Oh, it's okay. a victory for rule of law. But, okay. you know, Sami Krab is still a member of the party. Right. We would wish that he joins the efforts of the party to win the elections. Mm. I mean, we are still a family. So okay. it's not a problem. <laughs> Dr. Haji, I'm grateful for your time this morning.
He's, he's the director of research of the uh, NDC. Nana Kumia is the director of communications of the uh, NPP. Thanks so much, those of you who stayed at to be part of the show. We